Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Kidlit Joy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to talk about the books that have been shortlisted for the Early Childhood Book of the Year for the Children's Book Council Awards of Australia 2024. To be eligible for this category, picture books have to be fiction, drama or poetry and they should be appropriate in style and content for children who are at a pre-reading early stages of reading generally for children who are between zero to six years of age and that description comes directly from the CBCA website. There are six books in this category and I'm going to go in order of them I mean I enjoyed all of them but I'm going to go in order of them from my least favorite in the stack to the one that I enjoyed the most. Of course I'm coming at this as an adult I'm looking at it through adults eyes I'm also looking at them through the lens of a teacher who might use them in a classroom so sometimes that does impact on how I rank these books the first one that I'm going to talk about is Gymnastica Fantastica by Bryony Stewart which I did really love this is about a young girl hi everyone so it's it's funny because I was editing this video and one of the things that I did was I defaulted to calling the main character or referring to the main character as a she which in fact is not necessarily accurate because it's just a child and so I think there is a lot of really great connections in here and ways for ch all children to connect with this main character because their gender identity is not clearly defined on page so I just wanted to mention that because I was thinking that while I was reading it but you know I just defaulted to say to choosing a pronoun while talking about the book which is not necessarily something that we have to do. Who is practicing her gymnastics and she is learning and getting better. It is about perseverance and practice and always trying your best. She will always put on shows for anyone who will watch. She's deeply enthusiastic about it. This one has lots of descriptions and verbs because the character is moving a lot through the story. So it is great for that language development. It also has really lovely and sweet illustrations. It's very bright and colorful and is just really a beautiful book for this age category. Then we have Can You Teach a Fish to Climb a Tree by Jane Godwin and illustrated by Terry Denton. This one is a really lovely book about thinking about your strengths as a person and not trying to judge yourself by what other people can do. So I think it came about by that you know famous quote everybody's a genius but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it'll, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid and this one is about okay well would you expect a baby to be able to drive a car no you wouldn't they have their own strengths they have their own things that they are able to achieve and then it also looks at you know different weird scenarios and thinking okay well how likely is this to be able to happen it's not because the person or the animals aren't intelligent enough to be able to do something like that it's just that it's not part of their skill set right and then it also looks at you know the amazing things that happen in nature like fish being able to swim in shapes and hippos being able to run and leap underwater and that they're uniquely suited to those scenarios so if we try to put them in different scenarios it, it's not helpful because that's not what they're designed to be able to do so it's really about thinking about the wonderful things that we are capable of and being able to recognize our strengths being able to play to our strengths and being able to accept ourselves for who we are so it is a really lovely book and then we have one little duck by katrina germain and danny snell this one is a play on five little ducks so this is about a little duckling who goes out on an on an adventure and at the end of the day the mother duck goes outside to call the duck back but instead of saying quack 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 she says moo and so a cow decides to come home too. And so every time this happens, the little duck and another animal comes home and they all have dinner together. So it's a really fun one that is exploring farm animals, sounds. This one like is perfect for the age category because not only is it based off a nursery rhyme, but it is also talking about different animals, different animal sounds. It is really lovely. The illustrations are just beautiful and it's a really fun story. Like this is one that I'm going to be reading to my niece because she both loves animal sounds and animals. Then there is Bear and Ducker Friends by Sue De Gennaro, which is an absolutely gorgeous little book about friendship. They're, they're friends, but they're also very different and they have different passions. So when Duck wants to try out dance lessons for the first time, she wants Bear to come along, but Bear is really shy and is not convinced that it is going to be okay. So it is Bear taking a leap of faith and trusting that Duck is going to be there for, there for him and that they're going to have a good time. And trusting then the next time that Bear comes up with a suggestion that Bear is ready to jump in and leap in and join in. The story is just very very sweet. The illustrations in this one are just so adorable. I absolutely love the colour palette and I love the style of the illustrations. I've been reading Sue Gennaro for years and years and all of her books are slightly different in the illustrative style and this one is just lovely for the age category. Then there is Grace and Mr Milligan by Kaz Godwin and illustrated by Pip Kruger. This was actually nominated in two categories this year. This is the story of Grace who 
lives next door to Mr. Milligan. And Mr. Milligan is old and he has a pet goat. But the two of them are really good friends and they love to have picnics together. This book talks about their favourite food. They love to eat different fruits and they also love to have a bowl of whipped cream with all of them. So there's you know, some really beautiful illustrations. But then Mr. Milligan's goat Charlie becomes quite sick and eventually passes away. And Mr. Milligan obviously feels the grief of losing his pet, his friend. And Grace is trying to help him to see that there are still good things in the world. And it's their friendship that helps them to be able to move forward with their lives. And it's a really lovely story. I like the way that it does handle and tackle the topic of grief because a lot of kids lose pets and it's, it's a hard thing for them or they might lose a loved one or a family member. This one does talk about how friendships, how strong friendships can actually help us through really tough times. And then unsurprisingly, just because I'm a Bob Graham fangirl, uh, The Concrete Garden, which is a really, really lovely story. And this one is actually inspired by the lockdowns here in Melbourne. So this one is about, so this one is about Amanda who lives kind of in a housing apartment estate and during a time when they can't go outside and they can't go and play she's looking out the window and all she's doing is imagining an amazing garden and so when she's finally ever able to go outside she takes a box of chalk and she goes down to the the ground floor and she starts drawing the most amazing things and the other children come and join her and they create the concrete garden and it's this bright spot in everybody's day as they look down and they see all of this amazing color so it's about community coming together it's the power of imagination and creativity and finding the positive even in a really tough time and tough circumstance so i deeply appreciate this one there are quite a few books i think for kids that are, have come out or came out or have since come out since we had lockdowns that sort of look at the impact of that and the way that people coped with it. The other one I'm thinking of is The Heart of the Bubble by Trace Bella, which also looks at how people came together. So yes, it was tough. Yes, it was difficult. And yes, it really sucked. But at the same time, you have these amazing stories of communities coming together to help each other out to check in on everyone and make sure that everyone was okay. And I think this is another really great example of that. So those are the six books that are shortlisted for the Early Childhood Award this year. I'm really behind on editing all of these videos, so I've got to get them up pretty quickly because the awards are being announced at the end of this month, or well, actually they're being announced in like three weeks time. So got to get on that. And then I will have my reaction video for the winners uh, after they come out. So stay tuned for that. In the comments, I'd love to know if you have read any of these books or if you're planning on picking any of them up, or if you have recommendations for books that sound similar to the stories that we've talked about today. I hope that wherever you're on the world, you're staying safe and healthy, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.